so good afternoon all of you in the previous class in the previous class we had discussion about the most important contributory factors for abundance of the insects and also we had a discussion about the hierarchy position where the class insecta is placed in the previous class we also had a discussion about the insect integument and the structure and function of the insect integument how these insects undergo molting process what are all the important steps and the terminologies and the important hormones which are responsible for the molting process in this class we are going to discuss about the body segmentation of the insects so what kind of segmentation is present in insects the six legged ones and the terms and our different kinds of modifications and also we will try to understand about the most important part is the head and the sclerites and sutures sclerites are nothing but the plates the toughest plates which are available on the body so this is something interesting that there are certain modifications as well in some of the body parts some will have a egg laying instrument called ovipositor at the last segment like females but some females may not be having the very distinct ovipositor and some may be having a very big head some may be having a small head some may be having a small thoracic region some may be having a very big thoracic region some may be having a small abdomen some may be having big abdomen there are different kinds of antenna which are available on the head there are different kinds of compound eyes small or big or colorful and as far as the thoracic region is concerned there are different kinds of wings we also know there are some some insects they doesn't have wings we also know there are some insects they lose the wings and the legs all the insects will never have the similar kinds of legs so there are different kinds of modifications of the legs there are different kinds of modifications of the wings there are different kinds of antenna there are different kinds of mouth parts so these are all the most important organs the appendages which are available on the insect in this class as i told you that we are going to discuss about the body segmentation let us see what kind of body segmentation is available in the insect you can see this picture and you can as well very clearly see the body segmentation like <clears throat> when you look at the insect the insect can be divided into three important body segments the big one one is the head and the second one is thorax and the last bigger part is the abdomen the thoracic region the abdominal region and the head region the first region is the head region in which they have all sensory organs they have all sensory organs like antenna 
sensory organs like compound eyes sensory organs like mouth parts so it means it is the feeding and sensory center it is the feeding and sensory center as far as the second part is concerned the thoracic region the thoracic region will have legs and wings that we know very well three pairs of legs on three segments and they have two pairs of wings on the second and third thoracic segments so it means as the thoracic segments have wings which are used for for flying the thoracic region will have legs which are useful for movement or locomotion it means the thoracic region is the locomotor center the thoracic region is the locomotor center and the abdomen <coughs> which has got more number of segments and this region is some kind of metabolic region in which the insects digestive system excretory system nervous system reproductive system excretory system what not all the systems are placed in the abdominal region though some system some part of the system is also placed in thoracic but however majority of all these metabolic systems are available in the abdomen that is the reason it's a metabolic region in general as i told you that <clears throat> the insect is always divided into segments and these segments are also called as somites and metameres and few segments come together and forms a region for example head for example is the thorax thorax will have three segments whereas the abdomen abdomen will have generally 11 segments and head head is a some some kind of capsule which is formed out of six segments so it means some segments come together some segments come together forms a region which is nothing but tagmata and that kind of arrangement is also called as tagmosis the arrangement of these segments in the embryonic stage remember when the egg is actually incubating and the larva is getting developed inside the the larva is developed inside the egg there are a few segments which are you can be seen and that's called is a primary segmentation whereas in adults the number of segments are clear it will never change and that kind of arrangement is called secondary segmentation and you can see here the first one we will we'll, we are trying to discuss about the first one the first one is the head the first one is the head i told you the head contains the compound eyes you must be seeing on the left side you can see a wonderful picture of the grasshopper which is looking at you and when you look into the close view of the grasshopper head it looks like a demon you can as well see two big compound eyes and two antenna and some mouth parts so that's the reason this head center in any all the insects it is called as a feeding and sensory center i told you this is the fused capsule like arrangement six segments are come together closely attached and head is formed it means head is fusion of six segments head will have a pair of antenna and which is a very important sense organs and that's extraordinarily useful for the insect to have a touch sense and also smell sense the head also will have a pair of compound eyes and some small eyes we call them as ocelli and the compound eyes and small eyes which we call as a ocelli they are the sense of vision 
and another important part is the mouth parts the upper lip the lower lip and the two pairs of jaws one pair we call it as a maxilla another pair we call it as a mandibles and the upper lip lower lip maxilla mandibles they are the parts of the mouth a typical chewing and biting type of course there are n number of modifications and they do have maxilla and the lower lip they have some kind of sense sense and that's useful for the sense of taste it means the head remember head is the first tagmata head is the first tagmata of insects head is a big capsule a fusion of six segments head contains a pair of compound eyes head contains a pair of antenna head also contains distinct mouth parts and the second one is thoracic region i told you the thoracic region that you also know very well whenever you catch an insect you will see the three pairs of legs which are located a pair in each thoracic segments and two pairs of wings which are located in the second and third thoracic region which we call them as a pterothorax p t e r o pterothorax so it means as this thoracic region as a two pairs of wings and three pairs of legs which are useful for the locomotion which are useful for flying and walking and jumping and crawling so this is called as a locomotory center the thorax consists of three segments i told you these three segments can also be called as pro meso and meta pro thoracic region meso thoracic region meso means middle and meta thoracic region and a pair of leg in each thoracic region and a pair of wings in second and third thoracic region when you cut the thoracic region or abdominal region just like that and there are four plates actually see entire you can see the four plates a kind of ring like structures the dorsal is called as a tergum and the lower or ventral side is called sternum and the lateral side we call them as a pleuron so the thoracic region is a locomotory center this is the second tagmata of the insect the first tagmata is the head the second tagmata is the thorax and the third one is abdomen is the third tagmata i told you the abdomen will have all the systems inside the reproductive system is always located in the abdomen and the excretory system is always located in the abdomen which is the malfusion tubules which are jointed with the digestive system the majority of the digestive system is always located in the abdomen and many many part even the nervous system majority of the nervous system is located in the abdomen that's how we call them as a metabolic and reproductive center and they usually most of the insects will have 11 segments in the abdominal region that is the third tagmata and the abdominal abdomen region also will have a egg laying instrument a egg laying appendages that is called ovipositor in the last segment and the abdomen will also have a respiratory openings and these respiratory openings we call them as a tracheal opening and these tracheal openings are also called as a spiracles so let us now look into the details of the head the first one the first tagmata is the head i told you the head is a capsule kind of structure which is a fusion of six segments let us know what are all these six segments and these six segments the labral segment 
labrum is the upper lip you can see here labrum is the upper lip the labral segment antennal segment intercalary then the mandibular segment then the maxillary segment then the lower lip labial segment you need to remember these things and the labrum there are no appendages on the labral segment but antennal segment will have a pair of antenna on the intercalary because labrum actually they don't have a separate appendages which can move and the intercalary segment doesn't have any appendages a mandibular segment will have a pair of mandibles actually it is very very difficult to distinguish with all these segments you can only see at the time of embryonic development but otherwise when you when i give a insect it's practically not easy to distinguish all these segments unlike your the thoracic segments and abdominal segments so there are six segments i told you this is the fusion of six segments a capsule kind of structure and also we will discuss in this class about the sclerites the plates the sclerites are the plates which are available on the head and each plate is actually separated a line which is nothing but sutures let us see what are all the plates before that we also we will try to understand about the orientation of the head how the head is oriented to the body is called orientation of the head how the head is oriented to the body so you can see here the picture is very clear prognathus hypognathus and opisthognathus or opistorhynchus prognathus means the mouth parts directed parallel to the insect body parallel to the insect body directed forward directed forward if the mouth parts are directed forward it's called as a prognathus if the mouth parts are directed downward like you can see in the grasshopper here that is called hypognathus if the mouth parts are actually held just below the abdomen thoracic region and abdomen region in between the legs that is called opisthognathus or opisthorhynchus which you can see in the bugs and mosquitoes because at the time of rest you can see the mosquitoes will keep their mouth parts just in between the legs so these there is three kinds of orientation you can commonly see and this is important character taxonomic character for some of these fam orders hypognathus means hypo means downward prognathus pro means directed forward opisthognathus means directed backwards so these three kinds of orientation is commonly seen in the insect now we see what are all the segments what are all the sclerites as we had a discussed in the previous slide that there are six segments the insect head is a capsule kind of structure which is the first tagmata the capsule kind of structure which is having six segment fused six segments are fused together to form a capsule kind of structure and when you look at the insect head you can also as well see the sclerites the plates the sclerites there are 10 sclerites you can see in this picture the vertex is the one 
ద ఫస్ట్ వన్ వోటెక్స్ అంటే మాడు ఒక రకంగా చెప్పాలంటే ఇన్సెక్ట్ మాడు పైన ఉంటుంది వాటెక్స్ ఇస్ ద వన్ దెన్ ఫాలోడ్ బై ద ఫ్రాన్స్ ముందు భాగం యూ కెన్ సి హియర్ వాటెక్స్ ఫ్రాన్స్ క్లైపియస్ and the labrum which is the upper lip of the insect so in the front part in the front part of an insect you can see four sclerites one is the vortex then the frans frans ante oka nudur laga anukovachu meer then the clypeus then the labrum labrum is nothing but a upper lip so the, these four sclerites you can see on the head but the lateral side on the lateral side you can as well see other sclerites as well like gina post gina occiput fox post occiput ocular ocular means the sclerite on which the compound is located antennal sclerite sclerite on which the antenna is located so there are 10 plates there are 10 plates there are 10 plates the most important one is the vortex you can see a inverted y shape line here i told you on the other day when i showed you a video of molting process the insect always breaks the old exoskeleton at the head so you have seen the video when the larva wriggling out so a larva actually moves the head fast then it breaks the old skin breaks and then it comes out so the old skin is always broken at the head region and that is what is called ecdysial suture or ecdysial line ecdysial suture or the ecdysial line and the next one you have to remember all these important 10 sclerites but each sclerite each plate is actually divided by a line a suture a fine line which actually divides the each plates so let us try to understand what are all those lines so the lines the first one is ecdysial suture that is the real suture and of course we also call the another there is one more suture which also called as a real suture but this is the one which is actually available on the vortex region and this is the place where the insect old exoskeleton is actually broken so that the insect comes out from the old exoskeleton so there are there are it's very easy to remember the suture which is the line suture is nothing but a line the line which is available on the vortex is called epicranial suture the suture between frans and clypeus is called as a frontoclypeal suture the suture which is between clypeus and labrum is called as clypeolabral suture the suture which is lying between frans and gina the lateral lateral sclerite frans and gina is called as a frontogenal suture and the suture which is lying just around the antenna is called antennal suture the suture which is actually lying between the uh, gina and uh, uh, post gina the last one post gina and the neck region is occipital suture and the uh, uh, suture which is lying between gina and subgina is called subgenal suture it's not difficult to remember because you can just just add the front sclerite and the lateral sclerite name so they, these are the lines which are actually dividing the plates plates are nothing but sclerites so this is the structure of the insect head and as far as the thoracic region is concerned the thoracic region we already know that they have a three segment that is the second tegmenta and the thoracic region will have a three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings and this is the locomotory center as far as the thoracic region is concerned the first thoracic region is prothorax second thoracic region is mesothorax 
third thoracic region is the metathoracic region but generally the plate the the plate which is available in the prothoracic region sometimes it is extended sometimes it is modified into various structures you can see here you can see here in case of cockroach in case of cockroach the pronotum which is actually extended over the head whereas in case of grasshopper you can see here the pronotum is some kind of saddle saddle ante gurram nadipe tappudu gurram meeda veskune material it looks like a saddle and in some structure it, it, it actually uh, gives a some kind of bizarre kind of structures uh, they have different kinds of extensions look some kind very ugly also some insects so these are the different kinds of modifications as far as the pronotum is concerned now the last part is thoracic region and the abdominal region so this abdominal region is the last part and this also we is called as a metabolic and respiratory center that we already know that usually these segments can also be divided as a pre genital segments genital segments and post genital segments so pre genital segments are up to 1 to 1 to 7 and 8 and 9 because the reproductive openings are there on the 8th and 9th segments those segments are called genital segments and 10 and 11 are called as a post genital segments and also you can see some kind of modifications some kind of minor minor modifications so let us look into these hymenopterans like wasps and bees and ants so here there's a small modification the first abdominal segment the first abdominal segment will go and closely attached to the third thoracic segment the first abdominal segment will go and attach very closely to the third thoracic segment actually it looks like there are four thoracic segments but actually not whereas the second second abdominal segment is extended it looks like a um, uh, a kind of uh, a long pedicel or a petiole kind of structure the first abdominal segment goes and attaches very closely to the third thoracic segment and the second abdominal segment is a extended like a petiole and it's kind of pedicel kind of structure whereas the third to last all the abdominal segments they form very closely bulb kind of structure you can see in the ant you must be seeing in the ant and you must also you will be seeing in the wasp also so all the other segment third to 11 they come together they form a kind of bulb kind of structure and that structure is called as a gaster and you can see the uh, different kinds of ovipositors that's a egg laying instrument movie poster is a egg laying instrument that is the uh, you can see here there are big movie posters most of the uh, especially parasitic hymenoptera they have a big movie uh, posters that's a egg laying in you can also see the movie poster in the honey bee you can also see the movie poster in uh, uh, grasshoppers as well and uh, there are certain modifications as well like uh, in the last abdominal segments like uh, Uh, may flies you can see the anal cerci and the cockroach also you can see the anal cerci and forceps kind of structures in some insects then uh, you can see uh, legs also in case of larva that's uh, that we call them as a uh, false legs whatever it is true legs are always a jointed legs true legs are always a jointed legs which are available in the thoracic segments of larvae also then uh, there are some kind of carnical kind of structures on the fifth and sixth abdominal segments of aphid so this is uh, a kind of different kind of structures are also available and the development of course as i told you that it can be anamorphic development or epimorphic development and uh, in some insects uh, the number of segments keep on added later on but majority of the insects it's a epimorphic development once the adult is developed and absolutely there is no addition of the segments so that's it for the class and uh, thank you very much and see you again uh, in this class we try to understand about different uh, body segments 
and a few body segments comes together forms a kind of region 